Hello, this is uh, Christos. And Cream from Septic Flash, and you're watching Stormbringer, the Austrian heavy sign. Nice to have you here in Vienna. A uh, home match for you, Karim. Um, uh, I think you've been here several yeah. times. Um, a new album is out, Codex Omega. Um, is it a concept album? There's a song on it called um, The Third Testament. Is it uh, a theme throughout the album or is it just a song? No, it's uh, not a concept album. It's just a song that talks about, you know, it's an ironic statement about religion. But it's not a concept album. Mm. So, are you a, religi a religious person? No. After all, but just you have your beliefs. No, no, we we don't believe, of course, in religion. You know, we we want through our songs. We have some hidden messages that we want our f listeners to be concerned in a good way, and uh, we believe in ourselves. This is the most important, you know. But it's, it's a very critical lyrics on the album. So. Um, what are your contributions to the lyrics? I think none. You just no. wrote one song on the album, I guess. Yeah, I wrote one song, but just the music. Lyrics, actually, uh, everything does Sotiris. He's mm. the guy who is responsible for the lyric stuff. Of course, he writes also his own songs, but it's more kind of divided. He's taking care of the orchestra. Then you have Seth, uh, who is doing the uh, art stuff. And yeah, Sotiris is the one who is doing all the lyrical content. And I did drum stuff and yeah, also wrote some guitar riffs, but mm -hmm. none of the lyrical mm. stuff. Wh which song was it you co-wrote, um, the road? We did it together, Gospels of Fear, and uh, then we did also a little bit on Enemy together. It was, but the Gospel of Fear is the one which most of the ideas guitar-wise came mm -hmm. from my side. The rest is a mixture, mm -hmm. yeah. So he came into the band, he's really fresh in the band now, and um, how do you get along with each other? I mean, it's, it's different nationalities, it's we different generations. <laughs> no, no, no. You know, he's a great guy, great person, he's super pro, and uh, we are really lucky that we have Krim in the band. Uh, I'm sure he felt that we are good people, you know, from the first moment we welcomed him. And, uh, you know, the band has changed radically with his, when he joined the band. And uh, as I said, we are really lucky that we have Krim on drums. Mm. But it's two generations now as well. Uh, is he bringing in some different taste, taste in the band or something? Of course, of course, he has his own style. We gave him room to give some of his ideas on guitars, drum wise, you know, but when uh, you like something and you are professional, it doesn't matter the gap of generation of mm -hmm. nationalities, you know, mm -hmm. difference of nationalities. At the, end of the, uh, at the end of the day, we play music, you know? Yeah, of course. But uh, do you feel like um, younger in the band or are just on one on, um, level with the other, other guys? No, not younger. Of course, different because the fact that it's a different nationality, but that's the beauty of it. Like everyone is creative in this band and is pushing the other person but not like if there's criticism it's in a positive way and i like that everyone is uh, pushing forward everyone wants to get the band on the next level and yeah i'm really happy that <clears throat> they let me also give some of uh, creative input to this band not only okay you're the new drama you have to play this and this and that mm. so it's really nice that um, it's a combination of all of us you know everyone gives ideas and then we sort it out which is the best and yeah, so no, I, I don't have a problem with the that they're maybe older than me. It has always been like this. In every band, I'm the youngest and the smallest. That's it. <laughs> I'm used to it. Ah, it will change with time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, you you were studying classical ar arrangement, right? Um, I the composition and orchestration. Yeah, but it comes in very handy with the classical arrangements on the album, which is some orchestra bits and, and I mean basically it's mostly horns and trumpets and things like that but <laughs> yeah a lot of brass but you did uh, you did a bonus uh, thing called uh, Codex Omega uh, Orchestra uh, a symphony right yeah uh, what, what, what was that about what, why m even more orchestra on the songs well first of all you know uh, we have in our disposal a large full orchestra 
you know, like uh, 60 strings piece orchestra, mm-hmm. uh, huge brass section, eight horns, four trumpets, four trombones, one tuba, one cibasso, you know, it's a full orchestra and on top of that is a choir. Um, this is my subject, I have studied it, you know, sometimes we build the music in my orchestral template and uh, as we had uh, some songs as the, the main skeleton was the orchestra, we said why not to create like a bonus uh, these three orchestral pieces. We have done it before and it was it was time to do it again. Mm-hmm. So um, on the band pictures you just standing there with like costumes yeah. you made for yourself. I mean you could have stood there with the t-shirts and jeans but is this part of the overall package which is maybe important for the band? Yeah I think so you know we septic flesh is of course the main focus on the music but now it's also about um, <clears throat> the costumes and the whole concept has to be like the whole visual concept has to fit to the music so we wear those suits and um, they're similar to the ones we had before especially Christos and Seth mm-hmm. but uh, they got changed uh, they they change every album more or less and We're not this death metal band that would just go with jeans and t-shirt on stage and shred their asses off. Or into a trash band. Exactly. No, no. (laughs) This band also, as I said, has this visual aspect to it. And that's why we want to have those costumes. And yeah. You you also wear it on stage? Sorry? Do you wear the costumes on stage as well? Yes. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Like in the picture? Yeah, of course. course. The same. The same, same, really same. same. Exactly the same. Sometimes it's uncomfortable, but we have to, you know, it's part of our image. There was a little break in the the band's history for five years, from 2003 on. Um, Was it important for the band nowadays that you had that break back then? Would the band be here otherwise? Of course, you know, when uh, this this time came, it was, we had to take this uh, decision. You know, I had to go in London to work as a composer. My brother was my brother was focusing his arts. We felt that we didn't have something to give to our listeners, you know, and was a wise decision. We be we returned more mature. We recharged our batteries, and it was a wise decision. You know, mm-hmm. it was in favor of us, and uh, and uh, played an important role in the first era of Septiflus, which is mm-hmm. after Communion. Mm-hmm. But this uh, Codex Omega is the tenth album yes. of the band. Is there some cause of celebration here? Do you like, like uh, well, say? Uh, well, well not uh, this you, this did did you think you you were gonna make it to ten albums when you start out? No, no, of course not. But we are not also the band that we care about. You know, ten years, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five. Yeah. You know, it's not important for us. No anniversaries. No, no, no. We haven't done it till now. You know, this is more. Yeah. To the labels or other bands, but we are not. Yeah, I mean, this. at least the band is still here. And yeah, yeah. yeah. It's the most important, <laughs> and it's, we have more to give. We yeah. have more to give. Yeah, more to come. More. Yeah. <laughs> have you been aware? It's already the tenth album you've been on. No. The guys are around for that long. Yeah, I know that they're that long around. <coughs> I started to listen to Septic Flesh when the Communion stuff came out. That's okay. when I realized, okay. Wow, those guys are really, really nice. The stuff before, I didn't hear that much. Um, but yeah, cool. I'm on the 10th album. Why not? But Maybe I think not. we just... We hope you'll be on the 11th album as well. <laughs> I, I hope so too. <laughs> well, you know, um, to be honest, you know, before communion, we were in more in the other ground mm. scene. You know, we had uh, another ground label. And after Season of Mist, when we joined Season of Mist, we saw serious results you know till till our disbanded on 2002 we never toured Mm. we just released albums i had to study my brother has to study you know it was something that was i i I would i I could not say that it's not serious but was in a light edition you Mm -hmm. understand the second era of safety flesh after communion is for me the band starts since 2008 starting to get serious yeah 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 Yeah. To exist in a way, to exist. Okay. okay. Second, second yeah, the life. Second era yeah. is the most important when we joined Season of Miss. Then the management approached us. We got uh, agents. We got big tours, mm. and the results were we can see it now. Mm. That's why we're sitting here. 
Yeah. In a small club in Vienna to <laughs> play the night. <laughs> no, joking. Um, okay, last question. Um, uh, the lyrics and the music, of course, is very harsh of, of, of Septic Flesh and is very critical. And, and, and the times, I think the times at the moment demand very harsh music. Do you think uh, harsh times is, is a good time for metal music? People listening to metal music more or something? Because it's more brutal and more uh, they can let their aggressions out or something? I think, you know, there's because metal very often has something to do with personal stuff as well and everyone is facing some harder times in his life that doesn't matter if you know now the world is maybe worse than it was before i think metal has always been there and people will listen to it i can see that metal becomes more mainstream like more people listening to it than it was some years ago <clears throat> but definitely the content of of the bands and the lyrics is more focused on on the political bullshit that is happening right mm -hmm. now and you know even an environmental stuff um so i can see yes that uh, definitely there's a connection and i feel that people want to change things and they use this music as a tool to get out their their um ideas but um i don't know i think metal has always been there and just like people will listen to it anyways it's a universal language in a time of people don't speak with each other, I guess. Yes, I said uh, we play music, you know, and uh, to be honest, uh, we play extreme music. We will never be a commercial band, you know, and uh, well, I don't agree exactly with Cream, but uh, uh, I don't think uh, bands now are so um, Series uh, like was before the metal bands, you know. Now we mm. have uh, uh, we have been saturated, and uh, it's uh, I don't I don't I cannot see something serious coming from metal, you know, and mm. uh, and uh, especially for lyrics, yeah. especially for lyrics, you know. The but Septic Flesh is serious. Of course, of course. Our visual aspect, lyrics, it's super important for Septic yeah. Flesh, and we never use satanic or uh, political mm. uh, subjects you know yeah. it's not our cup of tea and uh, mm. we are more to ancient civilization philosophy history this kind of mm. stuff and uh, of course and the religion uh, subject but in a clever way you know yeah we don't use the other religion uh, lyrics for uh, to get an attention you know mm -hmm. to be extreme and uh, and uh, say bullshitting. Yeah, yeah. At the end of the day, you know, Satan and Christ is the same shit. Yeah. You know? In the end. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, and even, uh, even Titan said that uh, we don't believe, you know, we just do it for commercial reasons. And, uh, you know. Have you talked about it with Inquisition guys about that? Because they are very into the same topics, I guess. Well, better talk to them, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you I know. mean, you, uh, you're yeah. on the same bus all no, the time. But so. I haven't talked to, <laughs> you know, but uh, listen, uh, we know that the satanic stuff is for commercial reasons, you understand? We respect the bands that do it, but uh, it's not our it's not our uh, cup of tea, as I said, you mm. know. We get our... The, it doesn't the fit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't, doesn't fit. fit, yeah, yeah. No, no, it's yeah, but people out there should read the lyrics as well. So yeah, well, it's uh, definitely uh, worth it. Yes, but f the lyrics is for someone to read, you yeah, know, and yeah. to be concerned and be to to dream about music and with lyrics, you know. And it's it's about him how he will filter this stuff, you know. If he yeah. if uh, someone said to him Satan and just take it, I don't understand why to believe in Satan. Yeah, and not to me neither. You yeah. understand? Yeah. It's, it's, it's a comical thing, in a way. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it is. Yes. <laughs> and now we are, uh, you know, we are, you are not youngsters anymore, you know. Okay, I, I know that when you are young, you have this revolutionary spirit, you have this, uh, how to say, wrath, wrath, eh? isn't it? Something yeah, like, yeah. you have this anger, yeah. you know, and uh, you need to express yourself through some music and some lyrics. Mm. But, you know, yeah. We get you don't we need Satan for that. No, 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 no. <laughs> Satan is, as I said, like uh, yeah. the <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not real. Satan is not real. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, before we digress even more, I say thank you for the nice talk and uh, yeah, wish you a cool show in the Viper Room in Vienna. Thank you. <laughs>